We are now going to walk through the elements or basic building blocks of a platform called JSON to video. JSON to video is exactly what it sounds like. It's an API that you can send some JSON to and in response, it'll render a video for you according to the details of your JSON. Now would be the time to sign up to json to videocom If it's your first time signing up, you will get some free credits, which is great. And as a heads up, when you run out of those free credits, you will need to make a purchase of about 50 bucks. But my goal is to avoid you having to make that purchase. And the other thing that you're gonna have to set up is a file storage system, like for example, Dropbox or Google Drive. And if you're more technical, you can even set up your own file server. But I recommend you use Dropbox. Dropbox is free, it's simple, and it integrates really well with the automation platform we're going to be using, make.com. And the other pro tip I'll give you before we jump in is to make sure that while you're learning this platform, jsontovideo.com, make sure that each video you render is max two seconds to five seconds. For context, one JSON to video credit gives you about one second of rendered video. So if you make the videos really short, that'll stretch those free credits really far. Make sense? Here is the complete list of elements supported by JSON to videos API. Audio elements, video elements, voice elements, image elements, subtitles, HTML, text, components, and audiograms. We're going to walk through each one, one by one. Let's get started by creating a new scenario. And the first module we're going to add is going to be in the tools app. We're going to add a set variable module and we're going to call this variable movie. And we will provide the variable value soon. Let's add another module. And this one is going to be JSON to video, All right? The exact module that we want is going to be this one. Create a movie from JSON. <laughs> so now we have to sign up to JSON to video and get an API key. If you've already signed up to JSON to video, you can come over to your dashboard and you see this page here that says API keys. I'm going to mask mine out, but this is where you can find an API key for connecting make with JSON to video. And that's it. And we could write our JSON in here, but I prefer to reference the variable value out here. And let's save this and align everything. All right, let's get going by starting with this baseline JSON. And I'm gonna be using this tool called JSON Formatter. This is a tool that makes it a little bit easier to work with JSON. You can collapse sections of the JSON when it starts to get large. And if and when the JSON gets a little bit misformatted, you can easily fix that by clicking this format button. All right, so let's bring that back over here. Here you can see the overview of a movie.json object according to the JSON to video API. Each movie or video is going to have a certain resolution. This is a code that means 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, right? This has to do with how pixelated the video is going to be. Lower or low, I should say, will make the video more pixelated, but it'll render faster. And we're actually going to put SD here. SD, I think, is 720 pixels across and maybe like 480 pixels up. I might have that wrong, but anyways, we're setting things up so that as we learn, it's cheap and it's fast. That's the rationale. And the other aspect of a movie is it's going to consist of scenes, right? And each scene has a comment where we can put the scene's name. It's going to be scene one. And each scene is comprised of elements. Ha ha ha. And you can see there's also a key for elements that sits at the base of the movie object. So. This would be useful for putting like a backing track across the entire video, but we'll learn about this stuff as we get deeper. But anyways, let's now add a audio element. So I'm going to add a JSON object inside of this elements array. 
And the way that we add an audio element is by adding the key type, colon, space, another set of quotes. And then here we're going to type audio. We're going to provide the source key, right? SRC, colon, space, and then another set of quotes. Here we are going to provide the URL to some audio file. I think JSON to video supports MP3, WAV, maybe a couple other file types as well. But anyways, I've shared all these media assets with you so you don't have to waste time finding your own. And here in the audio folder, if you copy the link to this file and then come back to the JSON, you can paste it here. The only thing that we have to change is this last URL param. We have to change this to be raw equals one. This tells Dropbox that we want to download the file, not view it inside of the Dropbox application. And because we're trying to avoid that $50 credits charge from JSON to video, let's make sure that this video is going to be very short. So we'll say duration three seconds. And I think that'll work. So if we format this, yeah, this is important. So sometimes there's characters that you're not seeing in the UI, but are embedded in the JSON it has to be formatted properly in order for it to work. So you can click that format button, copy this. And then if we come back to make.com, let's paste in our first official movie, save that. And if everything's set up, we can run this and you see it looked like it completed successfully. If we come to our JSON to video dashboard over to the render logs page, we should see a new entry. Was I right? I said 720 by 480. I was wrong. It's 640 by 480. I was close. But we can see the video is three seconds. It took three seconds to make. If we click this, we can see it. Right? So that's our first movie. It's just an audio file. All right, let's rinse and repeat. So let's start with that same base movie. And because we're professional, SD, low, and then let's add a video element. So let's add a JSON object to the elements array of the first scene and put type video comma and here we put the url of the video i've provided a video file so you don't have to waste time looking for your own technically this could be whatever you want anyhow let's come back here and paste in the url and we have to Fix this. This lets JSON the video download the file instead of trying to view it in the Dropbox UI. And the last thing that we'll do is make sure we don't burn our free credits if we're still on them. And let's make this video only three seconds. So let's format this. It's hidden behind this ad, unfortunately. We're using a free JSON formatter. It is very spammy with the ads. But yeah, we can click format and copy this into make and save. And let's run this again and come back to the render logs. And here we are. There we go. Okay, now that you're familiar with the general pattern of what we're doing here, we're walking through each of the basic elements provided by the JSON to video API. We're going to move a little bit faster. So the next element is going to be the voice element. And if we come over to the JSON formatter application, paste this in. Here is how we specify a voice element. So type voice. Here's where we put the text that we want spoken. There are two or three 
model providers, I guess you could say, for powering the text to speech. There's Azure and then Eleven Labs, right? But using Eleven Labs is going to burn some of your credits. So that's why I'm suggesting Azure. There's this other page on the JSON to video documentation where you can choose the specific Azure voice. And let's keep this simple. Let's go with English. And just to mix it up, let's go with Duncan. And let's replace Emma with Duncan. And format this, copy it into the make.com automation, save, run. That looked like it worked. And let's refresh the render logs. And play this. Hello, world. Great. Next up is the image element. So let's come back to the JSON formatter, paste this in. We have to provide the URL to the image. So let's come back here. I've provided an example image to you. If you want to use it, you can use your own as well. Let's copy this. Come back to JSON formatter, paste. Fix that. And we're positioning the image in the center of the window. And we're going to show the image for one second. Let's format this, copy, and paste it into make.com. Save, run. Let's come back to the render logs, refresh. Take a look. Perfect. The next element will be the subtitles element. So let's come back to the JSON formatter application and paste this in. As you can see, the JSON starting to get a little bit larger. So we can collapse it to get a better overview. Right. So for the subtitles element, you're going to need actually two elements. You're going to need a voice element or some audio that has audible dialogue. If you use the subtitles element with non-audible dialogue or like a piece of audio that doesn't have dialogue, who knows what it might spit out. But anyways, you'll see how it works. Here I've customized this and I... I'm showing you here how to use a custom font. JSON the video comes with some pre-built fonts or some built-in fonts, but for branding, you're probably going to want to choose your own font. So all you have to do is come over to Google fonts and you can download one of these TTF files and place it somewhere on the internet. I've included it in the media assets that I'm sharing. You get the link and reference it like this. Make sure to change the URL param if you're using Dropbox. And these are styling changes. Anyways, I'm being a little bit pedantic. So let's format this, copy it into make.com, save that, run it. That looked like it worked. Let's come back to our render logs. Refresh, take a look. Hello world. All right, so it generates on the fly captions based on some audible audio. That's what the subtitles element does. Next up is the HTML element. And this element is pretty cool, except that you cannot do animations. That's my only gripe with it. But here we are. So we're gonna paste this in. And here you can see some HTML code. And let's format it, copy, paste this into make.com, save, run. Come back to the render logs, refresh. 
take a look. All right. So this could be useful. The next element is the text element. And it does come with some animations and customizability. We're just going to test it with this plain Jane version. But yeah, you can customize the font and do some things, right? It does have some animation templates, I guess you could say, right? So you can do some things with this. Let's come back here, format it, copy, paste, save, run, render logs, refresh, play it. All right. Next up is the component element. This is a fancier or more spruced up text like element. This is what it looks like. And let me show you some other components that come with JSON to video. I wish the JSON to video platform lets you build your own custom components. Hopefully that's on the roadmap. But yeah, definitely get creative with some of these. Also these. All right. Format, copy, paste, save, run, render logs, refresh. There we go. Let's play it. All right. We got a little news like title, a little news crawl. The next element is the audiogram element, which believe it or not, I was not able to get working. This is what the audiogram element looks like though. It's pretty cool. I guess you have to play some audio in the background and then it'll animate this waveform according to the amplitude of the waves in the audio. But anyways, if you're wondering how I figured out all this stuff, I pretty much read through all the documentation. So. As a heads up, there are two versions of the JSON to video docs. This to me looks like it's the V1 version. And then there is the V2 version over here, All right? The documentation is pretty good. Some of the information is a bit sprawled across V1 and V2, but anyhow, that covers all of the JSON to video elements or basic building blocks that you can combine with each other to automate the creation of your videos.